Hi everyone, I'm Soft Seaside and welcome to this new video. Today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons and why it's one of the best things that happened to me, artistically and in my personal life. This will be a very personal video, so heads up for me getting emotional. <laughs> Just a few words about the speed paint, the drawing depicts Eru, one of my D&D characters, and his sibling Lumer on the left side, who belongs to my friend Panfred Fischrick. The two of them are siblings and I drew this childhood drawing of the elves for my friend's birthday a while ago. I thought that the speed paint of our D&D characters would be fitting for this video. This whole video is dedicated to my D&D party. I love you peeps. <laughs> <laughs> With that being said, let's dive in. For those who don't know what Dungeons and Dragons is, Dungeons and Dragons, or short D&D, is a fantasy tabletop RPG. To say it very simplified, you and other players create your own fantasy characters and go on adventures. Unlike in video games, you control your character by speech, saying what they will do next, acting out your character, pretending to be them. You have pen and paper to write down your notes, your inventory, and check your abilities, and so on. And the success of all your actions are determined by rolling dice. There's also a Game Master or Dungeon Master short DM who guides you through your adventure by creating the story elements for you, playing different characters that your party can meet during your adventure, preparing battles for you and much much more. It's like a mix of an improvisation class and video games but without a controller. I always wanted to play D&D but I never had a group to do so. I did play one pen and paper session before though, that was super fun. I started playing Dungeons and Dragons in April 2021 during the pandemic. D&D came directly after after my K-pop obsession, which also made me become a better artist. Anyone interested in my experience of the hellhole called K-pop? <laughs> Back to the topic, the time before the pandemic was really hard for me. I was in university at that point and was the worst time of my life so far. Because of my depression and anxiety, I decided to move back to my parents and go to therapy and then the virus happened. I don't want to go too much into the details here. You can watch this video if you want to know more. Anyway, during quarantine, I focused a lot on becoming better and even though it was a really hard time, Dungeons and Dragons really helped me with that. And of course, therapy. <laughs> One day, a friend of mine told me that they are very obsessed with playing D&D right now and they are planning on doing their own campaign. Let's call this trend DM1 because they were our first dungeon master in our first campaign. We are currently in Act 2 of our main campaign and we switched DMs so DM1 could also be a player. DM1 already had one player for our party, a mutual friend of us who I took art classes with in school but didn't have so much contact with at that time. But even if we didn't talk frequently, every time we did it was always nice. And and I always cherished it. So I told the M1, hell yeah, I want to play with you peeps. The other two players were friends with the M1 who I knew from school and parties but didn't interact a lot with. And one of them is in the relationship with a friend that was already in our future D&D party. Since this was my very first D&D campaign ever, DM1 helped me to create a character. We had so much fun creating this character. We talked for 5 hours and created an absolute banger of a backstory. But funny enough, this character that I was so invested in and created for 5 hours was not the one that I played in that first campaign. It was Neon. If you want to know more about the creation of my first D&D characters, you can watch this video in the card above. You can also find the video in the description. So our first session came on a beautiful Sunday. Obviously, we were in a video call instead of meeting up in person because of a virus. We were all pretty nervous because we weren't sure if this constellation of people who didn't really know each other would make a good D&D party. But we had an absolute blast. We played the whole Sunday and immediately decided to play next Sunday again. And we played every Sunday from then on. We played so many hours from like 2 p.m. to midnight, sometimes even longer. Since we were all in quarantine, we all had time. It was truly magical. Our D&D group is really into the role-playing aspect of D&D. We like to battle and we had some really really exciting battles, but we are extremely invested in our characters and the relationships between them. We were like our own fandom waiting for a new episode every Sunday, rooting for the characters, sitting on the edges of our seats. It was even better than watching a show because you are part of the story. Oh boy, the amount of times I cried during playing. Oh boy. As you can probably guess, I love stories, considering that I draw my own comics. I love creating characters and put them into interesting scenarios with each other. I also like acting a lot, and D&D is the perfect mix of my love for storytelling, acting and video games. It just really hits the spot for me. I haven't been so invested in a fandom that brought me so much joy in forever. The K-pop phase right before that doesn't count. <laughs> Pretty early on in our campaign, I really wanted to make some fan art for our characters and ask for character reference. 
Francis. We had this absolutely epic moment in session four that I was so inspired by that I made a 12 pages long comic in one day. We had a lot of amazing moments in the first campaign and I made even more comics. I was drawing so much at that time. I drew for hours every day. I was so inspired. I loved these characters and these stories so much. I even wrote a song for our campaign. Usually I don't like drawing fan art. I feel restricted depicting characters with existing media correctly based on the official character designs and even if I'm really attached to the characters you can tell that I usually don't enjoy making fan art for them. But because our D&D characters are like our own OCs it was so much fun drawing them. I do enjoy drawing other people's OCs because there's just this personal touch to them and because the characters are mostly described with words you have more freedom to design the characters and make your own interpretation of them. And I was not the only one creating art. Two other players also started drawing fan art. We hyped each other up, we inspired each other artistically, seeing the art of each other and wanted to add something, we drawing scenes from our campaign, doing our own head cannons, ships and a use. One of the players became interested in Warhammer and learned painting minis and the M1 really liked making their character designs in Hero Forge, where you can create your own minis. So on Christmas we all got our own freaking minis. Oh my god, look at them, they are so beautiful! And while we're at it, look at all my other D&D equipment, mostly gifted by others. We low-key created an own universe of characters, we have our main campaign but we also have side stories where we play different characters in the same universe, some of these side characters even interacted with the main party already. It's great because we can experience with different characters and ideas and switch up DMs. Dungeons and Dragons especially helped me improving my character design. I was never really into high fantasy I have to admit and I still don't know a lot of the D&D lore. I am a weep first and foremost and as some of you probably know in anime and manga and JRPGs the characters tend to look very similar. D&D really challenged me and inspired me to draw different types of characters, body types and so on. It was so much fun because it was always connected to a story. I have designed a whole crew for Neon's backstory because I was so inspired by all these options. It really helped me making distinct characters. I still mingle in my comfort zone but I think I really improved. And the best thing about starting D&D, I found a group of people I really love and care for. We started as a group who roleplayed their gay fantasy characters and became really really good friends in the process. I'm getting very teary eyed writing this script, oh my god. <laughs> In my teenage years I was part of a friend group from school and while I have some good memories about them I often didn't feel part of a group. Parents were pretty strict back then so I couldn't join many group activities and parties. My home was also pretty isolated from the center of activities. So I couldn't go anywhere spontaneously without the car that belonged to my parents. Because we were so young and our brains and personalities still developed, some really nasty stuff was said in the group. We didn't know better back then, but it still happened. Therefore I also received some racist jokes. I didn't know how to handle them. I often joined the racist jokes about myself because if I would say something against it, it would be a joy killer. Of course I also said bad stuff and had some problematic takes. I don't want to hide that because I grew as a person and I can recognize my mistakes and I'm sorry that I said these things. But it still hurt me to experience racism in my own friendship group. It made me feel like I didn't fit in. And to be fair, the group itself wasn't really consistent either because of breakups, team building, gossip and all this messy teenage drama stuff. After school, it was just really meeting up for the sake of a good old times. I don't really join these activities anymore. In university, I had a study group but we didn't really do a lot in private. I really wanted to be part of a club close friendship group and I often felt very lonely because of that. Not saying that I don't have close friends at all, I do and I love them, but I always wanted to belong somewhere. But now in our D&D group everyone is very open minded. We are very LGBT plus friendly, we have the same humor, we are all nerds, we care about each other, we are reflecting, we talk about problems and we listen to each other when someone is not doing well. It's a safe space where I can talk about my problems and know that they are taken seriously. I can talk about my negative experiences about racism and no one is telling me that I'm too sensitive about it. I can be myself in this group and I care about these people so much. I even met my partner in this D&D group and I love him so much. Having a friend group like this is something I yearned for so many years after graduation and I'm so happy to have found them. 
I still have my insecurities and sorrows though. I sometimes still feel like I have to try my best so my friends like me, that if I don't perform well in D&D or make mistakes that they will hate me. But I know that this is not true, that I have to overcome these struggles and that I can talk with them about it. It's sometimes hard to distinguish between reality and game and it's important to talk about D&D in a meta perspective so no one gets hurt in real life. Nowadays we don't play D&D so frequently because everyone is busy. We still try to talk with each other weekly but we are all in the face of uncertainty and a lot of things will change for us in the next weeks and months. New workplaces, future plans, university, searching for a new apartment, all this nasty stuff that goes on in your mid to late 20s. Who knows if we will still play D&D in the future, if this group still exists in a few years. It doesn't matter because the sessions we have together are fun because the time we have together is great and even if it will pass I will cherish these magical memories forever in my heart. So to my D&D party who still doesn't have a name, I really love you guys. Thank you for being so great. That's it for now. Thank you for listening to me talking about my D&D obsession and getting very emotional because of the power of friendship. <laughs> this is not propaganda to make you play Dungeons and Dragons by the way. I just wanted to share my experience. I know that people have different experiences and not all of them are good. But if you feel like doing something new, why not trying it out? There are different tabletop RPG systems if you don't like high fantasy. Ask some friends if they want to join or find other people online who search for D&D groups as well. Did you know that you can play D&D alone? That's really cool. Just do whatever you want. But please don't forget to care for yourself. Thank you so much for watching this. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like or subscribing to see more. See you in the next video. Bye!